Hello, and welcome to another Mad Man restoration video. In this video, I will be restoring a Kent Coffee Perspecta nightstand. As you can see, this piece was painted by the previous owner. I don't know what look they were going for, but it doesn't look good. There is a lot of unknown when restoring a painted piece. The piece could have been painted to hide mistakes made by the previous owner. It could have deep scratches, watermarks, ink stains, cigarette burns, missing veneer, or even burn through veneer while the previous owner was trying to sand it. We won't know the real condition until the paint is stripped off. To start, I removed the door so I would have easier access to the inside and the rest of the piece. Now it's time to strip the paint and old finish off. To do so, I will be using QCS by Stripwell. If you have seen my previous video on stripping furniture, you know I am a fan of QCS. I simply spray the piece with product and walk away and check up on it periodically and respray if I feel it needs more. Stripping Perspecta can be very difficult because of the arches, but because I know QCS is great at removing old finish and getting under the arches that it would make the job a lot easier. As you can see, the paint and old finish is coming off easily just by lightly using a brass brush. If I was to use a traditional gel stripper, it would be a lot more difficult to get under those arches and crevices to remove the paint and finish. Then I use a damp rag to remove the remaining stripper. This is where QCS excels. If this was a gel stripper, it would be very difficult to try to remove the sloppy gel stripper in the crevices and in the arches. That is why I chose QCS specifically for this project. Here is the piece after stripping. After stripping, I discovered one of the arches was completely different than the others. The color is not even close to the other arches. I don't know if it's a different veneer, but I'm going to have to address that when it comes time to using toner. Next, it's time to sand the entire piece with 150 grit sandpaper. Now that the entire piece is sanded, you can see the natural color variations. There are at least three different types of wood on this piece. The arches are rosewood, the top, the front panels, and the veneer are walnut, and the legs are probably elm, along with the dividers on the front panel. After stripping and sanding, I found that the veneer on the top was completely missing and what was left was just the plywood board. So now I need to re-veneer the top. I'm using a piece of veneer that has 3M peeled stick on the back. It was recommended by a fellow refinisher, Chris at Optimum Modern. I start by peeling the edge of the veneer back and pressing down on the top and peeling more 
as I go along. I'm using a board with a rounded edge to press firmly on the veneer. This is to help ensure that the veneer will lay completely flat. I used the razor blade and made a rough cut to trim the edges of the veneer. This would be the perfect time to use a router, but as luck would have it, mine just broke. So now I'm sanding with 150 grit sandpaper. Then I did a light sanding with 150 grit sandpaper. Now it's time to add color. To start, I'm going to use Mohawk Medium Brown Walnut Wiping Stain. Mohawk wiping stains are completely different than the stain you can get at the big box stores. Stains like Minwax, Varathane, and even general finishes penetrate into the wood and they can accentuate imperfections like dents and scratches. However, mohawk stains are highly pigmented and will not do that to the wood. So please do not use stains or gel stains from the box store on your mid-century furniture. After staining the entire piece, this is what it looks like. We are not done here. Coloring is a process and it takes more than one step to get the color correct. Because the top has new veneer, I wanted to test it before I started to stain it. I am wiping the top with water to see what the veneer naturally looks like. After wetting the top, I was confident that staining the top in the same color would match the entire piece. Here is the top stained with the rest of the piece. Now it's time to address the one arch that doesn't match the others. The goal is to get the color closer to the rest of the arches. To do so, I'm using a custom stain I made for my previous project on the Jorgen Clausen William Hinn dresser. Next, it's time to spray the entire piece with vinyl sealer. I am using my HVLP sprayer, but you can also buy the same products by Mohawk in spray cans. Here is a piece after vinyl sealer and scuffing with 320 grit sandpaper. This next step is the most crucial in getting the color right for Kent Coffee Perspecta. You cannot achieve the crud color with stain alone, which is what most quote refinishers do. I'm using medium brown American Walnut Tone Finish Toner on the Elm dividers on the piece. These parts need a little help to catch up matching the rest of the piece. I could use painter's tape to mask off the areas I don't want toner, but instead I'm using this straight edge to block most of the toner as I spray. Is it lazy? Sure, but it works for me. Here's what it looks like after using toner on the solid elm pieces.
For the last coloring step, I will be using glaze. You want to apply a nice thick coat, and when it starts to haze, you want to wipe it off. This is what the glaze will look like when it's ready to wipe down. If you've ever waxed a car before, you know what hazing is. To me, it is exactly the same thing. You will do this step for the entire piece. As you can see, the color on the piece matches. The only pieces that stand out are the rosewood, and they naturally stand out because of their different grain pattern. This is how a Perspecta is supposed to look. Last step is to coat with lacquer. I mix my lacquer in my HVLP sprayer using 70% lacquer, 30% lacquer thinner, and splash a blush retarder. Now here it is, all finished. I did not realize until later that I had lacquer on my camera lens. I think we can all agree that this piece looks a million times better than it did when I received it. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel, and please follow my Instagram for more up-to-date mid-century modern restorations.